Good luck, Shay. You got questions? Huh? You got questions? Mm. No, let's just go to. It's going to be on the AF one, so. Bastard. <laughs> I just sent messages if it's not on the front screen. Sent, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Respected brothers, elders, and uh, viewers watching at home, uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us uh, the tawfiq uh, to pray Asr Salah and engage, inshallah, in a uh, live Q&A. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Sheikh Muhammad uh, hasn't been able to make it today, inshallah, but we have our esteemed uh, Sheikh Idris, inshallah, he will be taking the questions today, inshallah. Um, if we have any questions from our audience, please, bismillah, uh, just raise your hand, inshallah. And if anyone online has any questions, please just post on the chat, inshallah. Over to you, Sheikh. Yeah. So I have a couple of questions. Um, we'll start with first and then we can open up. So one question is, what is Zakat al-Fitr uh, or Sadaqat al-Fitr? So Zakat al-Fitr or Sadaqat al-Fitr, um, they're the same thing. It is uh, what's given at the end of the month of Ramadan. It's wajib on every person in the household. Um, and it is paid to for two reasons. The first one is to allow the poor people to enjoy Eid, to buy food and have a good time on Eid. And the second reason that we pay Zakat al-Fitr is that it wipes away those mistakes that we did in our, in our fasting. In Siam, the month of Ramadan, 30 days, there were many things we did good and many things we slipped. Our fasting was not perfect. So when we give this sadaqah, it makes up for those mistakes that we make. And so each person should pay from their own wealth if you have nisab. If you have the nisab of zakat, zakat, then you should also pay zakat al fitr. Um, and so it's for a wife should pay her own, husband should pay her own because the wife, uh, she's done her own fasts. So she wants to make up for her own mistakes in her own fast. So it's good to give from her, her own wealth. And likewise for uh, the father, the same thing. Um, children, you, you pay for every member of your household. So children under the age of uh, puberty, you pay for them. But if they are old, uh, old enough, then they should pay their own one. Uh, if they have their own money, then they should pay their own. Because if you think about what's the purpose, the purpose is to uh, wipe away the mistakes of your fasting. So if we as parents pay for our adult children, that's fine, but we're missing the point. It should go from the wealth of the person, if they're adult, to wipe away their mistakes of their fast. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the audience we can take? Mm. So a person's ill, Ill, how does he determine that? He's mm. unable to. Fast. Okay, so so um, the the best thing to do is you go to a Muslim doctor, a Muslim doctor who's an expert, um, and you speak to them, and they will advise whether you can fast or you shouldn't fast. That's one reason. The other way is that you're from your past experience. You know your body. You know your tabia. You know your nature. That how you react. So you know from past experience. If you fast with this illness, you get worse. So what's required is two things. Will your illness get worse or will the recovery be delayed? This is what we're looking at with illness. We're looking at these two things. Will your recovery be delayed if you fast or will your illness get worse? If these two are there, then you should, you're allowed to then not fast. And so you can uh, do your past experience. You know your body and you judge yourself based on your experience. I know if I do this, it's going to get worse. So then you judge that from yourself or you go to a Muslim doctor um, who's an expert and you take their uh, and see how. So these are th these are ways you can figure out whether you should fast or not fast. If you go to a non-Muslim doctor, most of them, they will always say don't fast. But the Muslim doctor, they know what the reality is fasting. So they will give you a more accurate uh, picture of, of um, whether you can fast and what to do. Um, and if it's a if it's a long term illness, if it's an illness that you'll never recover from, 
then you don't have to fast anyway. You give fidya. But if it's a temporary illness that you'll get better from, then you give uh, you you uh, don't fast and then make your qada afterwards. So there's not one method. You have to do you know different ways. Inshallah. You have to make qada immediately after Ramadan or even regularly short. Yeah. Like. The best thing to do is make your qada before the next Ramadan. But ultimately, it's before you die. You have to make those fasts that you miss for Ramadan before you die. And no one knows when we're going to die. And the best thing is to clear it before the next Ramadan. Otherwise, it can add up. There are some sisters, you know, if they were pregnant, like three, four Ramadans, or breastfeeding and they've got children. Some, I know some, they have WhatsApp groups where sisters have got 90 fasts to make up, three years to make up. You know, and they make WhatsApp groups to encourage each other. And when the winter months come, they bang out lots of fasts to make up. Just so, yeah, so what happens is you don't want it to build up. So the best thing is as soon as Ramadan finishes, make up your qada and then inshallah it's clear. That's mm -hmm. the best thing to do, I think. But ultimately, the, the obligation is before you die. But no one knows Allah give us long life of Ameen. good, uh, righteous actions and uh, pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheikh, in terms of fidya, what do you... Sheikh, uh, my wife takes uh, medical long fasting. After Ramadan, how much they pay for the fasting? Fidya, this is called fidya. It's uh, approximately five pounds per person per fast. So every fast that you miss, you give five pound in sadaqah. So if you miss if you miss ten fasts, you give fifty pounds. Yeah. So for example. But you only give fidya if this illness is permanent. She'll never get better. Like it's for the whole of her life. If it's temporary, then you wait till she gets better, and then she makes the fast up when she's better. But if it's permanent illness and she'll never get better, then you pay the fidya. Okay, is that clear? Just going back to your temporary illness. Yeah. If somebody said they wanted to give the fidya, fidya, and then make the fast after, can they do both? No, you wouldn't no, do that. No. No. You just do one or the other. Okay. Yeah. And if you're, for example, if you're told that you, uh, your fasting is, uh, your, your illness is permanent, then you give the fidya. But then let's say you get better and the doctors are always cleared, mm -hmm. then you would have to make those fasts up now, yeah, later on. Sheikh, how about those who, um, how, how do you calculate the fidya according to, okay. you know, just, for, just for those who. Okay, who so, uh, yeah. In the time of the Prophet wasallam, they would give uh, fidya in terms of uh, products. So they would give like one sa'a of dates or half a sa'a of wheat, barley, raisins. So these are the products they would give in a certain measure. Now in our time, you can also, in the Hanafi Madhab, allow you to give the cash value of that amount. So depending what the product is, you have dates, you have raisins, you have wheat, you have barley. So whatever the price is in the market, you'll see different fidya amounts. So for dates, the fidya amount for date is 18 pounds. But then for barley, it's five pounds. And so for different products, you'll see the different fidya. So that's why we, we go for the, the easiest one for everybody, which is the common one. And you look at the main massages and the charities, they're, they're choosing five pound per person per fast. So that's how you would work it out. So it will always change. You always have to look in the market, how much is wheat, how much is barley in the market. Any viewers have any questions, please post them through, inshallah. Uh, there's one question we had as well is uh, zakah. Does zakah have to be paid in Ramadan? So this is a question. And the answer to that is no. Ramadan is, uh, zakat can be paid throughout the year. People like to do Ramadan because one, there's more reward. And also, uh, it's easy to remember. So there's no issue with that. And it's common, many people do that. But do you have to give it in Ramadan? No. You don't have to give it in Ramadan. You do it whenever you, uh, of the year, but you just make sure you've got your set date that you stick to that set date. So that's a quite common question that we, we sometimes do get. Sadaqat al-Fitr, that has to be done before Eid prayer, but that's different to Zakah, which is your normal yearly obligation. Yeah, and the other questions that we have. Uh, one question of Salah we have is about uh, if the Imam is praying 20, can you leave after eight? This is a common practice. So we, the, ultimately you can leave, your, your, your choice, it's a, it's a sunnah, it's an optional prayer, it's not obligatory prayer. However, you should stick with the imam. If the imam's praying 20, you should stay to the end and pay 20. Because if you think about it, it's only once a year and we're supposed to do more mujahada, strive and push ourselves. 
So to stay for 20, it's not much longer, half an hour extra. And, and I would highly recommend those people who are praying 20 um, is to stay for the full 20 if they can. And they should really push themselves because it's only 30 days. So I think it's worth it. And if, you, if you've got you know, uh, things to do and uh, commitments, commitments and commitments, no problem. But if there's no reason, you're just going to sit at home and do nothing, then I would advise everybody, stay for 20, push yourself. This is the time to do it. Inshallah, it's, it's, it's so much reward. Only for half an hour, it's not worth it. Mm. So this is our advice to, to everyone, inshallah. Push yourselves as much as we can. Inshallah. Inshallah. Sheikh Zakat, would you stipulate it on gold or silver? That's, a, the that's Nisab. a question, Nisab, yeah. So oh, so that's a, that's a bit of a technical question, yeah. So, uh, so gold and silver metals, you use the gold and silver Nisab, but the question is cash. What do you do with cash money? Because cash is obviously, it's not linked to gold, it's not linked to silver, it's, it's, it's currency of the country. Mm. It's not gold and it's not silver. So what do you use the Nisab for gold or silver? So many charities use the Nisab of silver, but uh, there's many fatwa as well that allow the, which say we should use the, the Nisab of gold. We should use the Nisab of gold. And the reasoning is because at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu so silver and gold was very similar in price was very similar in price but if you look now gold is very like gold is now 50 pounds per gram 50 pounds per gram roughly and gold is a silver is about 60 pence per gram so in the modern times the gold and silver is a big difference at the time of the prophet said silver and gold were very similar in value so that's one reason sticking to the gold in this up and in our current in our in our uh in this country, if you only have 300 pounds, because if the silver in this arb is 300, let's say 370 pounds, if all you have is 370 pounds, you're not wealthy. In this country, you're not wealthy. So um, that's why some people use, uh, say, to go with the gold in this arb. The gold in this arb is about 4,700 pounds. Uh, and so they allow, they go with that for in the West. In poor countries, they say you should use the silver in this arb for cash. Um, but that's the fatwa from, from here uh, is the gold in this arb. Because in this country, if you have less, if you have three hundred and seventy pounds, you're not wealthy, and zakah is a for the for the wealthy people. Mm. So that's why mm. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows best. Sheikh, one, one question: more. Uh, You know, smoking or breathing smoke mm. would that break the fast? Okay, so uh, breaking the fast is anything physical that goes into your mouth, anything liquid, or any gas which you can see. You know, you can see the, the shape and you can see it or you can uh, taste the, the substance in your in your throat. This is perceptible. So with smoke, if the smoke goes into your mouth, deliberately you breathe it in like Bukhur. Bukhur is burning and you like inhale that, it. inhale it on purpose. This will break the fast because the smoke, you can see the smoke. It's physical. You can see it and you've breathed it in. Likewise, cooking. We mentioned this before. If, you're, if your wife is cooking and there's smoke and you go to the pot... And you breathe it in, and you breathe in that steam and that smoke. This will break the fast. But so, so this is it will break the fast. Deodorant, you know, if you put the deodorant on and you can, and the, the things in the air, and you breathe in, you can taste that thing. That can break the fast. So this is important to bear in mind. However, if it's unavoidable, you 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 you're not going on purpose to do it. It just like you someone's put bukhar, bukhar over there. Um, bukhar. Bukhar. <laughs> bukhar. Bukhar. bukhar over there and we're sitting here and it just wafts over here if it's unavailable that's fine if you can't avoid it you just walk through the control if yeah. you just walk through the kitchen out of your control no issue same with deodorant you're not trying to smith sm it in it's just uh, out of your control it's all overlooked so yeah it can uh, if you do it on purpose deliberately but if it's something that you can't avoid and you can't control then it will not break the fast inshallah sure. Yes, who do I miss? Yes. Clarification uh, uh, Who is signing the sub? Uh, the person with the seven and a half told up or uh, 52 uh, uh, told up uh, So, and then uh, I'm uh, so Who is I mean, so, Yeah, whoever's. Uh, this one, when does it end? Yeah. So there's two there's two positions. Yeah, for gold and silver. If you've got gold, you must use the gold nisab, which is four thousand seven hundred pounds gold. If you've got silver, you should use the silver nisab, which is uh, three hundred pounds. Question is cash. What do you do with cash? 
you know, twenty pound, fifty pound. Yeah. What do you do with that? So that's the only point of difference. Some ulama say you should use the silver nisab, which is three hundred seventy-four three pounds, and some ulama say you should use the gold nisab. So the, in, in the masjid here, the fatwa is upon the gold nisab for cash. Yeah, but if you've got gold, actual physical gold, you you only use the gold nisab for that because it's gold. The only point of difference is cash. What do you do with cash? Because it's not gold, it's not silver. Mm. That's the point that we have to. And I'm you had a question. Just a couple of questions. Uh, you can as long as you don't swallow it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and going, just going back to zakah, I get a bit confused because when I was growing up, what must have said it goes. So was I can pay monthly. So my salary goes up there. Yeah. Goes, no, you don't. You don't pay zakah from that. It's if you have. He said to me is you know, the way you calculate is if you have savings, say for example, a thousand pounds today. Because 12 months later, you still got a thousand pounds left. Yeah. Then that zakat, you have to give it because you still got it. Yeah. But if you spent it, then you don't have to. Yeah. That's what I'm saying again because with zakat, yeah. what I earn in terms of my wages, yeah. it goes in my bills and shopping and so on. But you don't have to speak to zakat. Well, my wife's got gold, which yeah. you give zakat. That, yeah. Do I have to use a for yeah, it's good. No, it's a good question. The thing is, because the, the the other requirement is nisab, and the other thing is have it for one year. You must have the gold, the, the not the gold, the wealth for one lunar year. That's the requirement. But the problem is, our money. When money comes into your account, as soon as the money comes in, one year has to start ticking. Mm -hmm. The one year starts, and then more money comes in, the new year starts ticking. Next month, more money comes in, new year starts ticking. So you've got multiple clocks going. So it's, very, it's impossible to uh, manage your on each income money when is a year for this like you receive money today in march the year has started then you receive money in june the year will start in june now so you'll have two separate clocks running for one year so it's very difficult and look at our money in accounts go in out in out mm -hmm. so the so the best way is to forget about this all you do is what's your date let's say your zakat date is first of ramadan so all you do is first of Ramadan, you go to your account, whatever's in there, if it's above Nisab, you pay zakah on that. Because to work out what you've had for one year is almost impossible. The goal, like your wife's goal, that's easy because you've got it there. But the money in your account is going in, out, in, out. Uh, you know, we all know bills and money. So it's the, so I would not, it's too much difficulty. Just on the first, your zakat date, whatever's your balance in your account on that day, your savings, your current, all your money, whatever that balance is, if it's above Nisab, you pay zakat on that. For, for gold is 4,700 and for silver is 370 pounds approximately. Inshallah. Yes. Yes. Can he uh, make the whatever money is given? It's for zakat. No, so zakat has to go to eight categories. There's eight categories of people zakat has to go to, and the key point of zakat is ownership. The money has to transfer to ownership from you to the person. So madrasa is not a person, they can't own anything, or the hospital, you can't own anything, school can't own anything. But you can give it to the, the madrasa, and they will be like a, a wakil for the students, you know the poor students, the poor students. You give the money to the madrasa, and they will look after it for the poor students. So they act like agents. They act like agents for the poor students. <clears throat> so you can do that, but not to build a school, to build a mosque. That's yeah, you can't. You do lilla lilla for that, lilla sadaqa is for that, but zaka is, is different. Inshallah, so should we? It's cool. One last question, and then we'll, yeah. If somebody owes you money, um, do you have to take, you have to take that into zaka? Yes, yeah, so you would if, if someone owes you money, yeah. so it depends. Yes, so that would be classed as your money. However, you've got to do analysis is it considered a good debt or a bad debt? What's a good debt? A good debt means that person is trustworthy, reliable. You know they're going to pay you back. If you know they're going to pay you back and uh, you trust them, then you should pay zakat on it. But if you're not sure uh, you're going to pay, then you don't pay zakat on it until you get it. When you, If you do get the money, then you pay zakat on it on that, that time. But if you don't know you're going to get them, if you think you, you're sure this person's, I'm going to get the money, 
then you can pay zakat on that just to, then because it's considered your money. It's a good debt or a bad debt. That's what you want to look at. Mm. Yeah, there you go. And I feel guilty for it. Am I supposed to be paying that? No, because but is, is it was it a fifteen year repayment? How long was no, it? No, it was, it was agreement that you could pay back within three weeks. Yeah. And that person just so this is called this is a <laughs> this is this is a bad debt. You just write yeah. it off because it's not yours. But if he if, if he gives it to you, that. if he gives the money to you, you have to pay the cart on it. Yes. Just mm -hmm. one, just one year. That that year you receive yeah. it, you pay the cart. That's it. Yeah, very common. Inshallah. Inshallah. Make it easy for us, and inshallah, back next Saturday. I mean, inshallah, be sure to tune in, inshallah, every weekend, and hopefully, uh, Sheikh Muhammad will be back, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.